my name is Arielle. Welcome back to my channel. This year I am setting out to attempt a through hike on the Pacific Crest Trail and I'm here with my friend Nika Myers, which if you watched some earlier videos of mine you would have met before. Nika is a triple crown and a fastest known time holder, which is so amazing. And um, she's been over here all day with me, giving me like a good old fashioned pack shakedown and teaching me how to repack my way in a or repack my pack so that it's more efficient and uses space better, which has been absolutely amazing. And I'm just so freaking grateful for you. And ironically, when we sat down together, I thought she was going to tell me all the things I should get rid of in my pack. But instead, I ended this pack shakedown with a list of things that I actually have to add. <laughs> Um, but with that being said, I would love for you guys to benefit from Nika's wisdom as well. So make sure you stick around to the end of this video and Nika will give you her top three tips for um, getting your pack all ready for a through hike. Awesome. I'm so proud of you. I'm so excited. Woo! <laughs> so fun. I'm also very jealous. All right, let's jump into today's video where I'm gonna show you all the things that I'm bringing to start my PCT through hike. And right now my bag is actually all packed up because I was working with Nika to figure out how to like best utilize this space and really discovering all of the different features of this pack. And so I'm just gonna get this unpacked and then we can jump into the gear video. So I know a lot of times people come here wanting to know specific pieces of gear and I'll make it super easy on you and just put everything in the timestamps below. So if you want to jump around to specific things, you can totally just jump around and watch what serves you. But I'm going to start with like the big things and work my way down all the way to the small things like what I keep in the hip belt pockets um, so that, yeah, you can see every single piece of gear I'm bringing. And I'm going to start with my backpack. So I'm gonna be hiking with the Mountain Hardware PCT pack. It's, this is a 50 liter pack and it's the women's specific frame. Um, I did make a couple of, I don't wanna call it alterations, but um, took some of the, like, the extra features off to really streamline it so it really only has what I need. Uh, but it's a great pack. It's, you know, it's called the PCT pack. It's literally designed just for this and has really awesome, um, just like perfect features for like shoving a bunch of stuff in it, having a lot of like really diverse and usable space. The things that I changed about this to make it again, a little more streamlined was I took off the brain. Um, it is something that I may mail to myself at a later date, but as of right now, I didn't need this extra space. And then also uh, it comes with this like water bladder holder that can be converted into like a small day pack, which would be really amazing. Um, and I will definitely use it on maybe like smaller, uh, smaller through hikes or like smaller backpacking trips just to have that functionality. So you can go do day hikes or like cruise around town with it. But for the PCT, I am going to opt out of these two and just do the pack um, as, it's, as it stands without the brain or the extra in insert piece. For my tent, I'm going with the Mountain Hardware Nimbus two-person ultralight tent. And I'm super excited about this tent. I actually had my, my very first ultralight tent that I ever bought was like one of the older versions of this. And it's crazy how much lighter they've become. So this is actually two whole pounds lighter than my original ultralight um, tent of the same style. So super excited about this tent. I opted for the two-person tent for a couple reasons. One, um, my husband is gonna hike the first 100 miles with me. So having a tent we can share for that. And then also I just kind of like having a little bit of extra space to store my gear. Um, it does, you know, it's a couple ounces more, but it's in, in the grand scheme of things, it's like pretty negligible, the extra weight. Okay, so for my sleeping bag, I have the Mountain Hardware Phantom 15 degree bag, and it is a down bag. Um, I do have a waterproof uh, packing cube for it. This is um, not a stuff sack or compression sack. This is something I learned from Nika and you know, when she was giving me a demo of how to pack my bag more efficiently, is things that can be kind of still squishy so you can really compress things out to fill the bag space. So we tried a couple of different like vessels <laughs> to pack my uh, sleeping bag in and this one turned out being the best option. But yeah, I'm super excited about this bag. I do tend to run cold and uh, I know that it can get pretty cold at night in the desert and I would rather have um, a little bit of extra warmth and not be cold than, um, than to not have enough and to be wishing I did. So there will definitely be days and nights where <laughs> I maybe sleep with the bag open or sleep with a leg out, but I think overall, this is gonna be the perfect weight bag for me on this, uh, on this whole journey. Okay, so I just wanted to show you this before I pour everything out. This is a Sea to Summit compression sack. Uh, they're waterproof and they pack down really small. 
But again, like I was saying, um, Nika really helped me understand that it's better to have things be squishy. So I'll still probably use this sack, but I'm not gonna use it as a compression sack because when it's squishier, it can spread out and fill the spaces of the, like the nooks and crannies of the bags better and not have like those weird pockets of dead space. So this is gonna be where I keep most of my clothes that I'm not using throughout the day or kind of other miscellaneous camping things that I won't need to get throughout the day. Okay, so before I dive into this pile of clothes here, I wanna start with what I'm physically wearing on my body. Uh, for socks, I have the Injinji toe socks. I love these. <laughs> I wore them the whole time on the Tahoe Rim Trail and I didn't get a single blister. Obviously, like that was a different environment and anything is possible, but because that system worked so well for me last time, I'm gonna go with it again here. On top, I have the Mountain Hardware, I think it's called the Crater Lake Sun Hoodie. I'm so excited about this. It's like, one, it's white, so it'll be a little bit cooler. It's super lightweight and buttery soft. And then for me, the most important part is the fact that it has a hood. Um, I'm not planning on bringing like a wide brim hat. I'm actually gonna hike in my PCT hat here. And so having a hood that I can put up to protect the back of my neck and like the sides of my face and the side of my neck on those like super, super hot days is gonna be essential. I like hiking in sun hoodies more than any other things especially ones like this that have a little bit of extra sun protection actually like made into the fabric and then on the bottom i have these mountain hardware hiking shorts i'll put the exact name and style on um down in the description box below but super great uh lightweight shorts definitely like nice and durable and yeah that's going to be what I'm wearing physically on my body uh, for hiking. Okay, so now for backup layers, uh, I'm gonna start with like the lightest layers and then build up to the heavier layers. And of course, if it's really cold outside, I can put all of them on together and kind of maximize my warmth potential there. Um, first, I have this wind shirt also from Mountain Hardware. And again, I'll put the exact name of and style of everything down in the description box below for anyone who's super curious about that. I was actually not sure about this layer um, because I've never actually brought a wind shirt when I'm doing backpacking. I wear them all the time doing day hikes, but Nika um, let me know that this is actually one of her favorite layers. And in the morning where it's still really cool, she said that she wore it almost every single day. So that was actually reassuring for me because I love this thing. I wore it a bunch when we were down in Patagonia. And um, yeah, so that's kind of like that next layer after the sun hoodie. Then we move forward into this fleecy layer. This is actually probably a, quite a bit more lightweight than it looks on the screen. This is the Mountain Hardware Air Mesh hoodie. And it's, um, yeah, like it's got this like fleecy soft material on the inside, but it's also really well ventilated and it's a really quick dry material and it's super lightweight. And I, again, um, brought this down to Patagonia and used it almost every single day and just really, really love it. These two together also make a really nice like weight and they weigh basically nothing. Um, so that would be like the next layer of warmth if I needed to add any more on. My puppy layer is the Ghost Whisperer Ultralight from Mountain Hardware and it is like, a, just like it sounds, super ultra light, but still incredibly warm and packed down super small. Again, this was a layer I brought down to Patagonia last month and just was obsessed with the versatility of it and um, just, yeah, like how lightweight and great it packed down. So super excited about this layer. For my rain layer, I have the Mountain Hardware Exposure 2, which is actually Gore-Tex and it's like, fully tape scenes, fully waterproof, and it is by far the lightest rain jacket I have ever felt or used or worn. So this is a really awesome layer considering, um, yeah, you never really know what you're gonna get with rain on the PCT. Like I've heard a lot of people barely use their rain layers at all, but then I've also heard others use it all the time. So it's something you wanna for sure have in your bag. And I'm just excited to find one that is fully waterproof, but also packs down super small and is really lightweight. So that's it for main layers. I'm really trying to keep it super simple and have layers that all serve a purpose, but also work really well together so that I can layer them together to have, you know, the maximum variety of, you know, functionality with the littlest amount of weight and like taking up of space. Um, I do have a couple extra little things. Like I have one extra pair of hiking socks so I can always have dry socks. I have a pair of sleep socks. I also opted for some Injinji toe socks for those, but these are taller, like they go up to um, just below the knee. So super cozy and warm. I really like sleeping in some cozier socks and having like dry, clean <laughs> socks to put on at the end of the day. And then I have just a little beanie. Um, normally I like to wear like chunkier beanies, but again, just trying to be like spatially 
um, a wear. So just this one that packs down really small and um, just some little gloves for those super cold mornings and days um, just to keep my hands warm. So also in that sack, like I said, I had a couple different like miscellaneous things. So this is my camp pillow. I know there are smaller options and I've tried them and I found them very uncomfortable. <laughs> so this is, um, a pillow from Nemo equipment that I brought on the Tahoe Rim Trail that has like, it's just way cozier. And so yes, it is a little bit bigger, but like this is gonna make me sleep so much better. So to me, it's worth it. Um, this is my sleeping pad. It's the Neo Air, but it's the short version. So it only comes down to like around my knees. And I can, um, if it's really cold, I do have a different full length sleeping pad that I can have my husband mail me. Or if I just need like a little more warmth for the day, um, I, I can put my backpack down at my feet or even uh, my sit pad can work as just like a little bit of extra insulation for the lower part of my body if needed. I have this very small camp towel. Um, we'll see. I know a lot of people don't go with camp towels and I do have some like wipe type things in my kit, which may be enough, but I'm going to start with this little camp towel and, um, and see if it's something that I end up using. And then last but not least in this bag, I have my bug net. This goes over my hat, over my face. Um, it's probably not something I will need until maybe more like in the Sierra, but I was chatting with Mika about whether I should just throw this in a plate or resupply or bring it. And she said, it's so light and so small that it's totally worth bringing because when the bugs are bad, you will do anything <laughs> to have your bug net. So this guy is just gonna live in the bottom of that bag as well. For my cook system, I have the jet boil. I think it's called the Minimo. It's like the smaller one. And then I store my um, little bit of fuel in there. I like this option. It's not the most ultralight option. I have done the titanium cup before with like a whisper light or, you know, one of those other smaller uh, stoves, but I found that it took a really long time for my water to boil. And um, I actually got really jealous of everyone who had a jet boil. So I did take this on the Tahoe Room Trail and I really enjoyed it. I am also, you know, letting the idea of cold soaking swirl around in my head. So we'll see if this makes it to the end. I do like having like a warm drink and there's something really nice about having warm food at the end of the day. Um, so we'll start with this and we'll see. I have loved this over the years, but yeah, subject to change. You never know. This is also something I brought on the Tahoe Rim Trail. It's the GSI Outdoors like ultralight mug. It literally weighs nothing. Um, I love this thing. <laughs> it's great for having like your, you know, your warm drink in the morning. Um, I also like to like drink my noons out of this, but this is a piece of gear that's not necessarily like multifunctional as some of the other things. So um, I will see if this makes it to the end. But as of so far, I think it's worth starting with. And I think with like some of my other, you know, kind of questionable piece of, pieces of gear, I'd rather have it and see if it gets used and then just ditch it later. Especially this, it's just so light. It's like almost negligible, the weight. So um, start with this and I'll let you know later in the trail if I still have it. Okay, so this bag kind of has some of like my miscellaneous toiletry electronic type things. Um, it is also like waterproof, but because it's like a zip top, it's not like completely waterproof. So first I just wanna show you my electronics bag before I dump everything out. All of it fits into this little quart size Ziploc and it is actually fairly light. Um, I am obviously vlogging this whole experience. So I'm gonna be using my GoPro and my cell phone. I need to have the capacity to, you know, charge batteries and charge my phone up. I'm also using my phone for navigation. So having a way to charge devices in general is really important. But let me show you all the little things I have in here. Okay, so first and foremost, I have a Nightcore power bank. I am not 100% sure the exact model, but again, I'll put it in the description box below for those of you guys who wanna know all the details. It is a 200,000 amp hour watts i don't know whatever that <laughs> whatever that designation is i'm not obviously like super nerdy i just know that this will charge my phone probably four or five times um and this one charges it charges itself back up fairly quickly like a lot of people don't realize this but some of these power banks take like eight to ten hours to charge um and sometimes you're not in town for that long so this one i think it takes between four and four and five hours to fully charge itself back up I have only a couple of cords here because luckily a lot of them transfer over. Um, my GoPro and the Garmin um, that I'll show you in a minute both use the same cord. So I have a cord for that. Um, I have a cord to charge the um, power bank itself. And then I have my iPhone cord. And then I do have a like a quick charge wall charger. This will also be really um, 
like a big determinant about how fast your like power bank and your phone and these things will charge when you're in town. So I got one that has the fastest capacity. The bottom um, piece is what I'll charge, the smaller one, um, I think it's USB-C, is what I'll charge my uh, power bank off of and then the upper one that's like a USB I can use to charge either my phone or my GoPro batteries depending on um, you know what I need in the moment and maybe a little bit of both uh, in town and then I did bring a, a, a dock so I can charge two GoPro batteries at a time this is something that I'll see if it's necessary um, I'm just have no concept of how many GoPro batteries I'll be going through and um, you know how quickly I need to be recharging them. So starting the trail with this, but kind of hoping that um, it's something that I don't end up needing. With that, I have four in total um, because there's one in my GoPro, uh, these Enduro batteries. Um, these are like their longer lasting batteries and they're also more adept to dealing with colder, or I'll say extreme weather. So extremely in ex extreme heat and extreme cold. So I have four GoPro batteries in total. And then this little device right here is an adapter for my phone. So here I have my med kit. I have um, just like this kind of pocket guide for wilderness first aid. Um, I did, my wilderness first aid certification in 2020 before my original attempt at the PCT that never got started because of COVID. <laughs> and then I recently did my wilderness first responder certification in the fall. So I just wanted to have some of those tools with me just in case so that I can be a resource, um, not only to myself, but you know, other people who are out there. Um, and with that, I have, you know, a couple of little tools in my first aid kit that maybe not everyone would carry, but just, again, I want to be able to help, um, help anyone in need if I have, if I have the skills to help and support. So I have things like, you know, gloves in here, like a kind of like triangular bandage, um, regular band-aids. I have um, this doTERRA Correct X, which is basically like a natural version of Neosporin. Um, and then like a couple of like little, you know, medicine type things like some ibuprofen, some like tummy stuff. And um, I also have some backup water purification powder just in case my filter will were to fail. I hope it doesn't because it's very chlorine-y tasting and I really don't want to drink it, but you know, just in case. This was one of the places where Nika actually had some suggestions for me to add in some things like some Luco tape, I think it's called, and KT tape. So there's a couple of things I'll add to here and I definitely think I want to add a little bit more like ibuprofen and Benadryl and stuff like that. I hope that I don't need to take it all the time, but like when you need it, you need it. And that's something that I only have like maybe one serving of uh, in here right now. So this will get a little extra love here in the next couple of days before I head out. This bag has tampons. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. And then this is my toiletry kit. Again, before I dump it out, let me show you what it looks like. When it comes to toiletries, like I'm probably being bringing more than others and less than others. Um, I think it's really personal and I'm also really open to the possibility that my personal care will evolve <laughs> as I'm out on the trail since the longest I've been out at this point is like nine days, you know, just shy of 200 miles. So uh, a couple of things that I have in here are, um, I had transferred some of my favorite products into little lip gloss tubes and I put these in my resupplies. So they're super lightweight and I really only have what I need. I have a face wash. I have like a hydrating serum. So like if I get really windburned or any of those things or sunburn, I have something to help with my skin. And then I have, this is actually just Dr. Bronner's diluted um, so that I can have a little, you know, soap when I'm in town. Um, or, you know, I can put a splash of this on my, um, my wipes and kind of use it in the moment as well. Um, I have this little face scrubber. It's very light, just a little silicone thing at home. I use one that kind of like vibrates, but I thought I'd try this. And again, I'm open to the possibility of it changing, but I used to really struggle with acne and it was like a really big bummer and really hard on my self-confidence. So, you know, <laughs> keeping like a small, um, skincare routine is like my safety net and I'm cool with that. So normally when I'm backpacking, I just bring a little bit of baby wipes, which has been really great, but I was recently turned on to these things called port wipes, which they, um, let's see if I can get it open. They are like these little, almost like coin size things, very light. And they actually, you add water to them and they open up into very similar to a baby wipe, but they're hypoallergenic. They don't have like anything added, um, biodegradable and all that, but I will still 100% be packing these out. Definitely always leave no trace. Um, but they're fragrance free, things like that. that can be kind of sensitive to fragrances. So I will probably use a couple of these a day in my, um, kind of like nighttime routine, you know, 
cleaning up some places, <laughs> maybe wiping off my feet, things like that. Um, and this will be a way I can kind of wipe off, you know, my like face wash or anything like that. So I'm super excited about those. Um, I have some bug spray, the doTERRA Terra Shield. So again, just like a more natural art alternative to DEET and things like that. I opted for these um, on, on guard, like doTERRA on guard travel toothpaste. They're like, it's just natural toothpaste and they come in these little tubes. So I have just what I need every single time and all my resupply boxes are set up to um, fill me in or you know fill up my reservoir of these for each section. Um, during the day, I'm just gonna use like a moisturizer with sunscreen. I also have like a really small uh, body sunscreen here. I tend to not burn once I have a good base tan, but it's been winter here in Colorado. It's actually snowing very hard outside right now, which is crazy. Um, but I will for sure use sunscreen through the desert. And if I'm being totally honest with you, after that, I probably will only use this on my face because I don't really burn after that. I also have earplugs. Um, I just tend to sleep better at night, especially like camping uh, when I have earplugs in. I feel like I can be hyper vigilant, and so earplugs kind of help turn that off and let me just like tap in. And I put a fresh pair in every resupply box, which I'm excited about. I have my toothbrush, and I did chop the end off of it, but it wasn't for weight. It was so that it would fit better in my Ziploc bag, because otherwise it's kind of awkward. So I did cut it so that it actually fits sideways in my bag. This will obviously have to be replaced a couple of times throughout the trail, but this is the one I'm starting with. So I also have some biodegradable flossers in here. Again, I have just as many as I need and I have all my resupply boxes set up to have like the perfect amount, um, which is really nice. Okay, sorry if the camera angle just shifted a little bit, my battery died. Um, the last thing I have in my little personal care kit is these like mini essential oil bottles. Um, I'm really passionate about holistic wellness. As most of you know, I'm getting a master's in holistic nutrition, taking a leave of absence to go hike the trail right now, um, but I'll jump back in and finish as soon as I get home. So I just brought like a very small amount of my four favorites. Um, if you you're an essential oil person, I brought oregano, On Guard, Adaptive, and Tea Tree, and these are all um, doTERRA essential oils. So this is my food bag. This is three days worth of food, and this is, I think it's Z-Packs, um, one of their like ultralight roll top um, bags, which I'm super excited about. It's super durable, but also very lightweight. And then this is kind of gonna be my eating vessel. I've transferred a lot of my um, like freeze dried dinners into Ziplocs, which I know you can pour your water straight into that and eat out of that. But I also know that that does expose you to um, like some endocrine disrupting chemicals, which as someone with autoimmune stuff, I'm just trying to minimize <laughs> as much of that as possible. And so I feel like doing that every day for five months is um, yeah, it's just not ideal. So instead I brought a silicone bag. The nice thing about these two is you can put boiling water in them and shake them and they like self clean. Um, this also does, you know, it's not a perfect thing as far as endocrine disruptors go, but um, it's a little bit better. And sorry if that's like more than any of you care about, but again, just something I'm passionate about. Um, and then I have my super long spoon, um, which is really nice <laughs> because um, you don't have to get your hands all uh, like foodie to get to the bottom of your bag when you're eating. Okay, so the rest of the stuff I have here is either gonna be like clipped to the outside or in an outside pocket or kind of like shoved into one of the outer pouches. Um, starting with my toiletry kit here. Um, this is like the actual bathroom kit, I guess I should say, instead of toiletry kit. So this has like my ultralight poop shovel. It has like, I have this little travel bidet. I just um, kind of feel like it's a little bit cleaner. That way I have more of those porta wipes. Um, I have the doTERRA on guard like sanitizing mist, which is basically like a hand sanitizer. It's got, you know, alcohol in it. Um, and then a, like another Ziploc baggie in there for the wipes when I am done. Okay, so for my water system, I'm going with the Sawyer system here and I have the Sawyer Mini. One of Nika's pieces of advice for me was that I might actually want the full size Sawyer squeeze because the flow rate is so much better and it's easier to clean. So I'll start with this, but it is something that I may change to like the bigger one later. Um, I plan on using two smart water, one liter smart water bottles. If I can find an alternative that fits with this, that's not that kind of like cheaper plastic, I would love that. Because again, I'm just trying to reduce my <laughs> exposure to endocrine disrupting chemicals. But uh, at the end of the day, you know, you can only do so much. So that's the plan for now. If you guys know anything that fits these, that's maybe more of like a silicone or like a heavier grade, a little like heavier grade plastic. Um, let me know in the comments below. I also have, um, 
two two liter C knock bags, which I can filter out of the bottom. And uh, for the desert section, this will allow me to carry six liters of water all at once if needed. Obviously there'll be some sections where I need the full six layer liters and some sections where I need a lot less, um, but these are pretty lightweight and roll down pretty small. So I, it's nice to have that versatility and those options without taking up too much space in my bag. So this looks a little clunky, but it's actually very lightweight. This is a mini tripod setup for my phone, which I will do a fair amount of filming on. I found that I like the phone GoPro combo. I find like the GoPro is amazing for like stable shots and um, things like that. But sometimes if it's like a really beautiful scene, it, the mountains are there, it makes the mountain looks tiny, whereas the phone takes like beautiful video. So I wanna have the option for both. I've never traveled with any sort of like tripod for my iPhone before. This thing also has like a Velcro strap so you can like strap it onto like a branch or things like that. So I'm gonna start the trail with this, see how I like it and see if I can, you know, use it enough for it to be worth it. It does take up a little space. Like I said, it's a little clunky, but it is very lightweight. So of course I have a headlamp. Uh, we have a lot of different headlamps in our house, so I just, took them all onto my little scale and grabbed the lightest one. Super excited about this. I got the new InReach Mini 2. Um, I've used the regular InReach Mini on the Tahoe Rim Trail and lots of other adventures in the past, but the new Mini is lighter and it has a uh, longer like battery capacity, which is really great. So uh, less charging and um, less weight, which is awesome. So I probably should have showed you this when I showed you my bathroom kit, but this is my Kula cloth. Um, it's just like an antimicrobial cloth um, for peeing. For sunglasses, I have just like, I wear these on all these all the adventures. So if you watch my videos before, you've seen these a million times. I just have my Oakley Latch sunglasses. Um, I'm a big fan. I've been using these same pair, basically same style for many, many years now. So in the hip belt of my backpack, I have a couple of things. I have um, Burt's Bees is my favorite chapstick. The only downside is it doesn't have SPF. So this will be more like for nighttime. And then during the day, I would use this uh, Super Goop um, chapstick that has SPF 30 in it. I also have some Arnica, which is like a natural um, pain reliever type. I don't even know what you would call this. Like uh, homeopathic type medicine. So my hope is that I can lean more into this than into ibuprofen. But of course, like I said, I do have some ibuprofen if needed and then a lighter. I also have some headphones that have like a regular phone jack and have a cord. So I don't have to worry about charging them. I have my PCT permit and my um, California fire permit in a Ziploc baggie here so that, um, yeah, so it's easy to access, but it's also like protected from water. And then I have just this very small lightweight little Gerber knife. Um, this is like the miniature version of the one that I usually hike with. I also have a sip pad. Um, since my sleeping pad is a blow up option, I wanted to have something that when I'm taking breaks or things like that, I could sit on comfortably. So this is just like a super small ultralight sip pad from z -Packs. The shoes I'm hiking with, as you can tell, they have been recently worn. These are the Brooks Cascadia. These are the same shoes I hiked the, the Tahoe Rim Trail in. Not the same exact shoe, this just the same style of shoe. And I have already broken these ones in a little bit that came with me to Patagonia and on a really muddy trail run last week here at home. And I have my custom orthotics inside. Um, I do have like a point on my feet where my bones kind of push together. And so I got orthotics made that like push up there and spread my bones out. That was just the only issue I had with my feet on the Tahoe Rim Trail. So I'm excited to do some bigger miles in those and see if it's any better. And then I have my Dirty Girl Gators just to keep things like, you know, out of the shoes, like dust and sand and, you know, um, like little rocks and things like that. I will say, like, obviously I don't know for sure if it's one of the reasons I didn't get blisters on the PCT, or excuse me, the Tahoe Rim Trail, but I do feel like not getting those little things in your shoes is really helpful for preventing blisters. So I'm a big fan of these guys and I've worn them on many adventures. Last but not least, I have these Zero, that's the name of the brand, sandals. Um, they're very lightweight. I actually didn't bring any camp shoes on the Tahoe Rim Trail and I was okay without them, but I'm excited to try it out. And I was telling you earlier that I had camp socks with that had like toe socks versus just normal socks. And that's because these are like, you know, thong sandals. So just to make it easy, I can wear my socks, my sleeping socks and throw these on if I have to get out in the middle of the night to pee or anything like that. So like I said earlier, I thought that my pack shake down with Nico was gonna result in her getting rid of things for me, but it actually ended up with this small list of things to add. So I just wanted to tell you the things that I'm gonna add to my bag that I don't have with me today. One of them is just adding, like I said earlier, some more of the like, um, you know, like ibuprofen, maybe some like extra Benadryl, things like that to my med kit, the Leuco tape, the KT tape, 
Um, she said that I should bring a small re repair kit and her recommendation was a needle and dental floss. So I will add that to my kit. Um, waterproof repair tape, just having a smaller amount that you can like wrap around something. And then same with duct tape. So I'll just wrap some duct tape around my hiking poles and that way I have some duct tape. And then uh, a croaky like for my sunglasses so that when I'm not wearing them, they can hang around my neck and a buff. So those are the last couple of things I'll add to my bag. And I guess I said it just now, but I didn't show you them. I do also have trekking poles. Um, I'm a big fan. <laughs> I've been having issues with my knees actually a lot lately. So I feel like this will be an essential piece of gear. Okay, so now that you've seen everything that's in my bag for starting off this PCT journey, I'm really like so very excited for you guys to get to tap into Nika's wisdom because she has just been such an asset for me in this whole process. So Nika, what are your top three tips for doing like pack stuff? <laughs> yeah, well, gear can be so overwhelming as we've you know discussed before, and it's definitely a huge topic of conversation for anyone who's going out for just an overnight or you know several month long hike. And I think you know when, especially when we're starting, um, when we're starting to backpack or starting a new through through hike, uh, the questions that we're going to ask about gear might be a little bit different if it's you know a se you're a seasoned hiker. But if you're new to kind of the whole through hiking concept and are feeling overwhelmed about what to put in your backpack, the three tips that I could share are to uh, play and know how to use the gear that are that you are choosing to take with you uh, and don't necessarily have the first time you blow up your sleeping pad necessarily be out on the trail. Uh, those are really helpful things to kind of get a feel for uh, ahead of time. The second is to think about, and this is again, a super learning you'll learn, um, but think about the pieces of gear that can serve multi-functions. Uh, if you realize that you have two pieces of gear uh, that you think serve different functions at the beginning, you might realize that they come to share a similar function and maybe you only need one of them. Uh, and so, and then also to be flexible. Uh, what we pack in our packs at the beginning are based on a lot of research, on um, uh, gear that we've been given by friends or companies or uh, we've purchased ourselves. And But being flexible with realizing that um, what we start our pack with might not look like what we end a trail with. <laughs> and so allowing some of that learning space uh, can be huge. Amazing. Thank you so much. And what I love so much about this experience with Nika is like just how much every time, you know, I had a piece of gear, there was this, you know, tapping into the fact that it's personal and that we all are going to use different things for different reasons. And as long as I had, you know, a good reason for why I liked something, she was like, perfect. I love it. Let's keep it. And so, yeah, that's all I have for you this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I am super excited. Less than one week from today, I will be officially starting my through hike. And I'm just so excited to get out there. So thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you next week. <laughs>